Hey guys, still here and welcome back to this tutorial series on Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. This one is going to cover particularly the secondary armament of your ship, and by that I mean secondary guns and potentially case-made guns, as the torpedo launchers is going to have, or will at this point already have, its own video. Secondary guns, what are they good for? Well, they're usually fighting smaller ships. In case of this battleship, it is armed with 17-inch guns. They reload in almost 80 seconds. This ship is going to be potent against enemy battleships, but against enemy smaller ships, cruisers, light cruisers particularly, as destroyers especially, it is really going to struggle. Because not only do these things reload slowly, they also take a long time to swing those turrets around. So it is better to have more guns which are capable of quickly swiveling around and then taking out lighter targets, such as destroyers, torpedo boats and light cruisers. Why destroyers? Well, destroyers are very nimble, they're hard to hit, they're fast, and they can pose a big threat to your big battleship if you are not equipped with an acoustic system, so you will not be able to see the torpedoes coming. Take those nasty little destroyers out before they become a threat to your ship. Again, what kind of armament you put on your ship, and the same goes for main armament, is dependent on the type of enemy that you're fighting or the ship that you want to be building. I imagine that this is going to be a very important part in the campaign, and in custom battles it is already a critical component of your ship, so pick wisely. Now if you look at secondary guns, you've got a couple of different options. You've got everything from 2 inch all the way up to 8 inch. This is going to vary from ship type to ship type, as for example heavy cruisers are armed with a different type of main armament and only can fit smaller secondaries. The accuracy stats that you see here are of course impacted by other elements such as radar, uh, rangefinders, reloads, hydraulic turret speed. All of these elements are critical but right now I'm just going to keep them as blank because they're not that important right now. Now if this battleship is going to encounter a bigger formation then it's going to be able to take out the, uh, the bigger battleships with our 17 inch guns. Great, okay how else am I or what else am I likely going to see? Well I might spot battleships and the battleships are going to be escorted by cruisers. Okay, a cruiser. Let's say it's a light cruiser. It might have a few inches of armor, it is relatively quick, it's going to be trying to burn my battleship down using high explosive shells and it might try to pop torpedoes. So for those, in, for those uh, ships I would need something that can strike out to a decent range and at the same time uh, have a decent rate of fire. Now, arguably you could go, okay, I'm going to go right for 8 inch. Uh, you can. 8 inch guns, especially these 8 inch Mark IVs, are really nice. They fire out to a maximum range of 15.4, but they really come into their own at about 10,000 meter range because then you can see that the accuracy is at 9.5%. If I start adding more bonuses to this, it is going to improve. And you're going to see that the accuracy is now at 11%, and this is going to go up and up and up the closer you get. So I could put an 8-inch gun on several positions, but not on all slots. In this case, it is rather unique to have a battleship that's actually capable of fitting 8-inch guns on the tower. Many nations don't have this ability. But for example here, this 8 inch could protect quite a lot of the ship, as it has good firing arcs to the starboard and of course the other one will have that to the port side of the ship. So these are capable of defending my ship against lighter ships. Now let's say that you are also fighting some smaller ships, in which case I would probably bring the trusty 5 inch gun, the 5 inch secondary. Again there is the design decision of do I go for dual barrel, or do I go for a triple barrel? Triples usually have a slightly lower rate of fire, but they throw out three shells and they have a slightly lower accuracy, but then again that is also offset by the higher amount of shells. I personally really like the look of the dual 5 inch, and the dual 5 inch are going to be a nice asset as well. Now this one can fire out quite far, but it cannot fire beyond the 8 inch which is in front of it. So also consider how you're going to orient your ship, what threat is the biggest threat and what guns you want firing at that threat. The same can be said for case made guns. Now in this ship, it is a modern battleship hull or a super battleship in fact, I cannot have any kind of case made guns. On older ships you can and those are these ports down here. 
You can treat these as similar as secondary guns. So you can just pick any kind, five, six, seven, or eight inch, and I can put those down in here. They do not come in anything other than a single barrel configuration. So don't expect to be putting down triples down here. All right, so where do I put the two, three, and four? Well, again, that's going to depend entirely on the type of ship that you're building and the type of hull that you have. Sometimes you can put smaller uh, secondary guns, casemate guns in the tower, sometimes you can't. For example, on this one, I don't believe that I'm going to have a lot of room for them. I could put one here, but I really wouldn't want to because that's a slot for a main turret. Uh, let's go to a Japanese group or a Japanese ship because they usually have a lot more room. Now, if I add a main tower, it's going to be modern main tower. And this one actually has a couple of slots for smaller secondaries. The 4-inch can sit there, but not in these spots over here. That's where you had to have the 3-inch guns. Now, why would you want 3-inch? Well, they fire very, very quickly. They have a reload of only 6 seconds. But it comes with a trade-off, as with everything on these guns. They only have a range of 7.7 .7 kilometers. And at 7.7 .7 kilometers, they're not even that accurate. But they throw out a lot of shells. So you could argue, well, I might not really have that much accuracy on these guns, but I can sure pack a lot off them. And, oh, uh, normally the game actually mirrors these, but I guess I turned that off by mistake. Um, I could have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven turrets firing at the same turret. That's 21 shells every six seconds. That's a lot of firepower against lighter ships. And again, they're not terribly accurate, but just the volume of fire could make up for that lack of accuracy. Again, the design decisions are, what sort of ship am I fighting? Do I expect to only be encountering bigger ships in this encounter? Um, in which case, I would recommend the 8-inch guns. If you're fighting smaller ships, I would recommend 5-inch or 6-inch. Because these already have 15.1 second reload versus these at 25 and yes, if you up that auto reloaders, it's going to drop quite a bit. It's going to go to 15.6 for these and only 9.1 for these. And these little three inch guns are now firing every 3.6 seconds. Every 3.6 seconds, you're throwing out loads and loads of shells against smaller targets. In case you want a secondary warship, you can also argue that you might need more range. And these shells are also impacted by the type of armament that you pack here. Which type of uh, propellant do you use? If you look at Lidite, it doesn't really get any range. But if you look at White Powder, it gives you a bit of range and also a bit of shell penetration. Now, 2.5% penetration on a penetration of 2.8, 7.5 kilometer range, it's not going to make that much of a difference. You're going to go to 3.4. Uh, actually, that seems like a big difference. Oh, sorry, yeah, that's because the Lidite has a minus 20% shell penetration debuff. High TNT is overall decent. Two Powder, I believe, has the highest shell penetration boost at 10.5%. So now, these secondaries become quite dangerous indeed at 6-inch penetration. If you were to look at, let's say, a light cruiser, this light cruiser only has a belt armor of 2.5 inch. So... A light cruiser could very easily be penetrated by those 3-inch secondaries if you choose that type of propellant. Now let's say that you were instead building a secondary or a light cruiser. What sort of secondaries would you build then? Again, it depends. If I have a light cruiser that I want to use in an anti-destroyer role, I would probably give her a couple of 6-inch guns. And that is a way of getting a couple of uh, decent... Well, a decent trade-off between rapid-firing guns and decent accuracy. I would give them not so much propellant, or not so much uh, shell pen, because I don't really need that. But I would probably want a little bit more range. This is 2.5% gun range. This is less gun range, less gun range again. This is a bit more shell pen. High TNT is overall, well, decent. But white powder... No, actually, which one was it? Um, yeah, this one. White powder is 
This is going to give you just slightly more range. Arguably, though, I'm fighting destroyers, and destroyers don't have armor. So maybe the Lidai 2 would be better for these secondaries, because you just do a lot more HE shell damage. And as for secondary guns on this ship, I can only pick 3-inch guns. But I can fit a lot of them. And by doing that, I can create a massive volume of fire that's going to be deadly to destroyers. How you ploy these is up to you. You can say, well, I'm going to put them in the middle. And this way I can have these things fire out to every side, depending on where my threat is. In which case I would also recommend that you go for electro-hydraulic turrets. So you turn the traverse or the, you turn the turret 25, 30, no, 35% faster. Um, this is going to help quite a bit. And with a reload of only 6 seconds, and if you go for auto, it's going to be that 3.6 seconds, you're going to be destroying enemy destroyers very, very, very quickly. Every ship class has their own kind of secondary guns, and it is going to be up to you to figure out what sort of threat you are, or rather, what sort of threat you are facing, what sort of threat you want to be, and how effective you want a particular ship to be against a particular type of threat. That's what these secondary guns are for. Whether they're secondaries or casemates, that depends on your type of tech, your availability, uh, and I suppose to some extent also in the campaign, your amount of available money. I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want more tutorials, there is a playlist linked down below in the description. I hope you find it useful. Have fun playing World of War... Playing World of Warships. <laughs> playing Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. And I shall see you guys soon for another video.